process where we're getting the slab ready to turn it into the cup, it needs to be um, dampened and compressed and you can see little cuts and tears in the slab and this is because um, when I'm making the block it's not a completely um, closed process. Using a stainless steel rib I apply quite firm pressure to compress the slab and I don't worry about the marking on here because it gets cleaned up um, and occasionally I'll see a air bubble and I can just break the air bubble and open it and then reclose it. Then I turn the rib over to the straight side and scrape it along the slab to do one last compression. Then I turn it over and do it on the other side. template that is the right size that I need for the slab to make the cup and I actually make my blocks so they're about the same size that I need so that I reduce the, the amount of wastage and you can see that this block is almost the right size. Now I have to even up the sides so that I've got a flat base and a flat rim so you can see that the block is fatter in the middle so that's why I trim it up and I use a stainless steel rule and a scalpel. This side is almost perfectly straight so I'm not going to attempt to cut any of it off at all but another technique you can use is a timber rail and just push it in like that until you completely flatten off the edge. So now the slab is straight on each side. This is the former that I use to make the cup shape. It's a former that I've made myself so you can see I've thrown it on the wheel and um, glazed it and fired it and you need the glaze on it to make it um, slip out of the clay. So what I do to um, protect the clay and allow it to slip out is put a layer of baking paper around it tightly like that and um, just stick it down with a little bit of um, packing tape. So you see that the paper has to be flush with the base um, otherwise it gets tangled up in the base that's put onto the cup. My cups used to be made with an overlap join. I've stopped doing that and I now make a mitre join so that this end is mitered to um, complete mitre join on this end. I put the ruler at one end of the slab like this and then I just use my eye to make a diagonal cup. The base that I put on my cups are slip cast bases. Wrap the form around the cup and then I drop them into a puddle of um, slip cast clay. And because I do that, I need to key the surface that's going to contact the slip. And to do that, I just put in a, a line of serration and it's where the base is going to be. And I also have to score the join on this side. Now at this point I've left this end of the slab as it is because I'll take it around the former before I work out where I need to cut this part of the join. So you take it around like that, lift over this side and this is how I used to join them with an overlap, but now I don't. So this is showing me the mark where the other end of the slab needs to be mitered. And I just mark it really carefully. Put the slab back down on this side and then mitre this join here. Exactly the same way. I pull back from the line a little bit and then I cut on approximately the same angle and I take about three cuts to get through, that way you're not ripping the clay and you get a nice clean cut. And now this join has to be scored as well. So this is a rib 
um, with uh, teeth cut into it so it's a really handy tool and now we need a little bit of moisture so we need to um, dampen both joints just a little bit of water and we carefully bring this back up and push it into the joint so that is now perfectly flush and we use the rib to firm it down so you get a nice closed join and it's messy but in all Nerokomi work there are lots of opportunities to tidy up the outside sm smudging so there we have the form and um, I give it a final damp sponge around the top to prevent any cracking that may be beginning to show up this is a plaster mould that I've made specifically for making the bases of the cups. So what I do is I take the former out of the cup, see how it slides out because it's protected by that layer of baking paper. Then I lift the baking paper out. Then we use this. Um, quite a few potters use these, I think. This is a bisque cone shape that provides a type of protection um, for your rim so it, it maintains a complete circle around your pot so that when you lift something that's quite um, floppy you don't lose its shape now what I put on here is casting slip it's the same clay as the body of the cup and what we do is we pour out quite a thick layer and we're going to lift the cup onto that base and then it just gets left for the base to set up the other thing we have to look at is to make sure that the seam on the inside is quite secure and what I'll do is just run a damp rib up there to close it off 